Islands. I Hello you Angular developers, I'm Shai Resnick from HiRes.io and today it's part 2 of... Prepare for LG2! And in today's video, which is part 2 of this free course, we are going to learn what is the Angular style guide and how to use some of its guidelines to make our code as future ready as possible. And we will actually write some code today! So let's start! Here we see a simple controller, don't worry about the code too much, it's really simple. We have a controller definition, we inject the dollar scope and the statistics service and we just fetch the statistics. That's it! In order to make it look more like Angular 2, our goal is to flatten this code structure and change the dependency injection style. The way to achieve this new code structure is by applying the principles found in the Angular style guide. What is the Angular style guide? Glad you asked! The Angular style guide is a GitHub page that suggests how to lay out and write our Angular code and it contains all of the best practices. There are two popular versions of it, one written by John Papa and the other one by Todd Motto. Both are similar but have their differences and I will put links for both of them in the description. I personally prefer John Papa's style guide because he does a really good job at answering questions like why should we do it like that? Why should we do it like that? <sighs> now that we are familiar with the Angular style guide, there are three sections I want you to pay attention to. These are iffy, named versus anonymous functions which you can find under modules and manually identify dependencies or in other words use the dollar inject annotation so let's go over them <laughs> so first we have the if if stands for immediately invoked function expression, which is basically a simple trick to create instant function scopes. So by wrapping our code with a function and then immediately invoke it, we make sure our code runs like a normal global code, but also has its own private scope that no one from the outside can see. Why should we care? Because polluting the global namespace is considered a really really bad practice. Oh. So let's implement it in our example. We start by defining an anonymous function, wrap it with parentheses and invoke it. Okay, so we have our function, we wrap it in parentheses and we immediately invoke it. So let's wrap our code inside of this function and that's it. So again, if we use iffy, we can define any method we want here and it won't leak to the global scope. So we could go crazy with our declaration like it's 1993. Great, now that we have wrapped everything with an if, let's jump to the next section using named functions. Well, this is a really quick one. Looking at our controller declaration, instead of assigning an anonymous function as the last argument, we can assign a name function and write its declaration further down the code. Now we can reduce our indentation level. And that's basically it for this rule. Finally, we arrive to the last thing, manually identifying dependencies. Injecting Angular 2 dependencies in its simplest form will probably be just adding a type to our constructor parameters, so it will be much simpler than today's way of doing it. But in terms of syntax, if we take a look at some Angular 2 code taken from a sample to do app, we see that we still need to import our types before we can use them in our constructor. So it's not really the same injection style, but it's a simpler code structure. Plus, we can get rid of this weird function in the end of the array style of coding. If we want to have a similar looking code, we need to make one last change, and that is to use a special property called dollar inject. Dollar inject is one of several ways to create a minification safe dependency injection code in Angular. 
So instead of using the array notation that we currently use, we replace it with the attachment of $inject to our controller function and assign the injections array to it. Now that's bootylicious. Another thing we can do is to name our controller and services with their full path names. That way we can still avoid naming collisions, but it will be also a bit similar to the import syntax we'll be using in the future. And that's all the changes we needed to make. Now let's look at our marvelous creation after we apply the Angular style guide principles. We have an immediately invoked function expression, a name controller function, and all of our dependency injections are declared in our dollar inject property. So this is the end of part two. We've learned what is the Angular style guide, how to use if name functions and the use of the dollar inject property to flatten our code structure and to make it similar to the future one. And in part three, we'll cover how to kill dollar scope. So people, this was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, share the love, share it with your friends, like it and subscribe to the channel and make sure you join highres.io down below here and watch the other videos here.